A tragic accident occurred in Cabazon, Southern California, when two helicopters collided while fighting the Broadway fire. Three people lost their lives, including a contracted pilot, a CAL FIRE division chief, and a CAL FIRE captain. The crash also sparked a secondary four-acre fire, but it has since been extinguished. This marks the first fatalities of California's 2023 fire season. CAL FIRE and Riverside County Fire Department expressed their condolences to the families and colleagues of the victims. A joint Russian and Chinese naval patrol near Alaska last week triggered a response from U.S. military forces. The patrol, consisting of several vessels, operated in international waters off the coast of Alaska, prompting the deployment of U.S. planes and ships to monitor the situation. The Chinese embassy stated that the joint patrol was part of their annual cooperation plan and not aimed at any third party. While the presence of foreign warships was not considered a threat, U.S. officials responded with a show of force. Niger's airspace was closed on Sunday, as the deadline set by a group of African countries for Nigerian military coup leaders to step down and reinstate the democratically elected president, ended. The coup leader's actions were condemned by the United States, Western nations, and the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, which threatened military intervention. Despite support for the junta in Niamey, ECOWAS leaders organized a collective response to the coup, preparing for a potential last resort military intervention. France and the European Union also cut off financial aid to Niger following the coup. A massive fire broke out at a plastic storage facility in Mesa del Sol, Albuquerque, prompting warnings for people to avoid the area and stay indoors with windows and doors closed. The fire is not contained, and unpredictable winds are fueling its spread. Thick black smoke was visible from several surrounding areas. Authorities are working to clear the area of spectators as they battle the multi-alarm, multi-jurisdictional fire involving structures, products, and vehicles. Charles Gregory, 25, was rescued after spending nearly two days adrift at sea off the coast of St. Augustine, Florida. Knocked off his John boat by a wave, he clung to the partially submerged vessel, enduring jellyfish stings, shark sightings, and severe sunburn. The U.S. Coast Guard spotted him about 12 miles offshore and rescued him on Saturday morning. Charles is now recovering at home, suffering from dehydration and rhabdomyolysis. His father expressed gratitude to the search teams and the community for his safe return. A white mother, Mary McCarthy, is suing Southwest Airlines for racial discrimination after being accused of child trafficking while traveling with her black daughter. The incident occurred during a flight from California to Denver in October 2021 where a Southwest employee allegedly reported her to the Denver Police Department based on the color difference between her and her daughter. McCarthy is seeking unspecified damages for emotional distress and suffering caused by the incident. Southwest Airlines declined to comment on the ongoing litigation. Former President Donald Trump asserts that he won't receive a fair trial in Washington, D.C., where he is facing charges for allegedly conspiring to overturn the 2020 election results. However, history shows that courts have typically rejected such requests to move high-profile cases out of the Capitol. Meanwhile, Trump's legal troubles come amidst the backdrop of the 2024 GOP primary contest, where Republican candidates are treading carefully in addressing the issue while not alienating his base of supporters. U.S. soccer legend Abby Wambach emphasizes the importance of belief in sports, as fans witness the USWN's defeat to Sweden in the World Cup round of 16. The tournament saw unexpected victories from teams like Morocco, Jamaica, and South Africa. Challenging conventional expectations, Simone Biles' return to gymnastics also defied expectations, highlighting the pressures faced by athletes in meeting lofty anticipations. Critics must recognize that the USWNT has evolved since their previous wins and deserves appreciation, despite not securing another title. The UK government announced new rules to triple fines for businesses and landlords knowingly supporting illegal migrants. Repeat offenders could face fines of up to a £60,000 per breach, while landlords' fines may increase to a £10,000 per lodger and a £20,000 per occupier. The immigration minister stated the move aims to deter dangerous channel crossings by small boats. However, 
Opposition parties criticized the government's approach, calling for stronger enforcement actions to tackle the issue effectively. Pope Francis, returning from Portugal, stated that the Catholic Church is open to all, including homosexuals, while adhering to its regulations. He clarified that while the Church accompanies everyone on their spiritual journey, certain sacraments are restricted by the laws. The Pope's remarks emphasize the importance of love and patience in ministering to those not conforming to the rules. He also provided a positive update on his health after surgery for an abdominal hernia in June. A train derailment near Pakistan's capital claimed over 30 lives, including women and children, and left nearly 100 others injured. The accident occurred while the train was en route to Rawalpindi from Islamabad. Rescue teams worked to save passengers, and the injured were transported to nearby hospitals. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif expressed condolences and prayed for the departed and the swift recovery of the injured. Train services were suspended as repair teams and medical assistance were deployed. President Joe Biden called for the release of Nigerian President Mohamed Bazoum, expressing concern over the military takeover and its threat to Niger's democracy. The U.S. has engaged in diplomatic efforts to restore the democratically elected leader to power. However, the situation has not yet been designated as a coup, and the U.S. has ordered the evacuation of non-essential personnel and their families from Niger. U.S. troops in the country remain restricted to military bases for now. Two U.S. Navy members, Jin Chao Wei, Patrick, and Wenheng Zhao, Thomas, were arrested for allegedly providing military secrets to China, posing a significant threat to national security. Assistant Attorney General for National Security, Matt Olson, vowed to pursue accountability relentlessly. Wei, a machinist's mate, is accused of sending sensitive information, technical manuals, and photos of military equipment to a Chinese intelligence officer. He faces charges of conspiracy to send national defense information to China. Former President Donald Trump pleaded not guilty in court, facing charges of conspiring to overturn the 2020 presidential election. The indictment, part of special counsel Jack Smith's investigation, also mentioned six unnamed co-conspirators. Trump has criticized the case as fake and demanded a trial outside of Washington, D.C. U.S. District Judge Tanya Chutkin, appointed by Barack Obama, is presiding over the case, with the next hearing set for the 28th of August.